So what does being a data scientist actually mean? Like, dear Lord, all of these job listings, they're confusing. Some require Python, SQL, Excel only. Like, it's what does it really mean? I'm kidding. Calm down, everybody. I'm putting the coffee cup down. I saw everyone's comment in the last video and a part of me is laughing, but the other part of me is like, damn. Some of the comments were absolutely savage. But anyways, let's have a quick introduction. Hello, my name is Tim Ju. I am a data and lifestyle creator here on YouTube. I have worked at these companies in the past. My bad. And I've worked primarily as a business intelligence engineer. You might be wondering, okay, you weren't a data scientist. Why are you speaking about this? Well, once you're in the data space, honestly, you know pretty much all of the roles, what they do, their tasks, pretty much all the things that they are learning and working through. At the same time with my degree at the University of Washington with informatics, my track was data science. So I do know some of the ins and outs of the basic practices, principles, and things like that. But especially after working in the industry, I now know the distinct differences between a data scientist, a data engineer, and a data analyst. But more on that in another video. Before we dive into what a data scientist does, let's backtrack and go into the brief history of it. So the role extends more off of what I was saying earlier in this video. Go check out if you haven't already. So things like the filing cabinet, Dr. Edgar F. Codd, things like that. But now let's talk after that. So since we moved past the filing cabinet, we now have an enormous amount of data in the world. So starting from the 60s and on, this is when this massive hoarding almost and collection of data, also known as big data, key term here, this is when all this began to form. But what do we do with this? How do we manage huh? millions to huh? billions to trillions of rows of data? What do we do? Now that is where data science comes in. I'll have an article linked down below if you want to have a more in-depth history of data science. But the big thing to know is the foundation of all data science is going to be statistics. So understanding different models, regressional analysis, and things like that. So these are very, very important and is the core of what a data scientist looks like and needs to know. In the past 60 years or so, it has expanded. It went from basic learning models and projections and tools such as Excel and has expanded more and more into these larger than life things like the internet of things devices, IOT devices, basic machine learning, and now everybody's favorite buzzword, artificial intelligence. AI. This whole history of data and in general, and this major buzzword of AI didn't just come out of nowhere. It's been something that's been building and growing for decades, for almost the last like 60 years. So now that you know the basic history of a data scientist, where things come from, what are some of the roles that you're going to see out there today? Well, there are two roles. The first one is gonna be your more traditional just data scientist. Based off of Indeed, this data scientist role is gonna range from the low end of a $77,000 range all the way up to even $195,000. Very wide range of pay, but the average is around the $123,000 range, which makes sense. This is because for a data scientist role, you are going to need to go to grad school. We'll talk more about what that means later when I talk about what it takes to be a data scientist. For the entry level role, you don't necessarily need a master if your program, say you graduated with a computer science degree or like I did an informatics degree, which dives deeper into these data science topics, then it may not be necessary. But for this role, you are still going to need to know SQL, which I talked about in the last video, Python, and you need some data visualization skills. So using things like Tableau or Power BI. But no matter what, you need to have a strong foundation in stats and math. That is the key difference right here. And I'm not talking about just like basic calculus shit. I'm talking about like serious levels of stats and math. This is called statistical modeling. So things like learning linear regression, all three are simple and multiple. Classifications, tree-based methods, resampling, non-linear methods, projections, and creating all these different predictive models. Um, other machine learning techniques that you need to really study and learn and understand how it works before you actually code. It. Yes, the coding is the how, but it doesn't matter if you know how, if you don't know why in the data science space. The why is the most important part. Okay, I got a little bit ahead of myself, but that is the basics of a data scientist. Now we're gonna go into the other role, which is the senior data science. This one has a bit of a higher range and it goes from the low of 105,000 to a high of 215,000. The average is about 150,000. You might be wondering, whoa, regular and senior aren't that different? That's because honestly, from what I've seen, they do about the same thing. They just have a little bit bump in pay and you just have a little more responsibilities on the back end. This means just projects are more owned 
by you as a senior data scientist versus a regular data scientist. So in this, you need to have some very advanced, advanced, advanced SQL data engineering skill sets. So like understanding the ETL pipeline and building that structure, extensive knowledge of data warehouses. So data modeling, of course, you need to know Python. You need to live in Python, Jupyter notebooks, whatever it might be, and as well as advanced dashboard building. But again, the number one most important thing is you need to know advanced stats. So I gave off a list earlier, but even you need to know beyond that, the cutting edge things that are happening right now that other companies are doing. If you know those things, you are a competitive advantage for a company. So you need to like live in this space and eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner pretty much. So it's knowing all of these concepts and being very engulfed in it. That's how you're going to be a senior level data scientist. All right, editing Tim here. I forgot to mention that another role that is very similar to being a data scientist is the BIE role, so the business intelligence engineer. I kind of mentioned this in the last video, but it's someone who is end to end, right? So someone who's able to be a data engineer, do all the pipeline work, also do the data science work too. So for example, BIEs at Amazon, they are very extensive and that means they have to know data science too. And they have to be very strong in both the pipeline building to the analysis to the data science work and as well as the presenting. So this is why BIEs at Amazon get paid a load of money. It's crazy. That is to note that that's another option if you're looking at the data science position to also look into the business intelligence engineer role because that role will be very similar as well back to the video now let's talk about how to become a data scientist so this is where it gets a little bit trickier like i said it's not like there are some roles where you don't need a graduate degree but the likelihood that you are going to get this role without a graduate degree is very low because there are so many people who are applying for those roles without a grad degree, just the chances are low and there aren't that many data science roles without that requirement. So in my humble opinion, to be a data scientist, you need to go to graduate school. There are tons of great options out there. I'll have another video on that soon, actually. But yes, and with this, you actually need a really solid and strong understanding of math and just overall stats. This is why most math majors or stats majors actually go on and become a data scientist because it's almost like the picture perfect role for them. What does life as a data scientist look like? It's living, breathing, and eating Python. That is pretty much the gist of it all. Using various packages like NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, Motley, all of these just to name a few. These are the basic foundation ones that you're going to be using every day. You are living pretty much in your computer in Python, working on projects like this. So with that, you also need to have a deep understanding of just different data types, different functions and different data models and how those stats models work and which one's going to be more appropriate for different scenarios that come up in the business. It's thinking in this way. So what does a great data scientist look like? Well, number one, most important thing, and I really need to emphasize this, is that they need to be business oriented. Oftentimes data scientists love to just create shit just to create shit. And that is not it. They forget that what they're making needs to benefit the business. Oftentimes a lot of data scientists I've seen just get fixated on a cool new data technique or model they want to implement, which is like good to experiment for sure. If people in the business don't understand this model or the benefit of it, there is no point in doing it. Because honestly, like you're not going to be able to teach all of these things to this audience. You have to think about the audience that you are presenting all of this information to. If it doesn't easily make sense to some of your data science colleagues, it's not gonna make sense to normal business people who are working in the industry. It's just not. All right, back again. I forgot to mention this too, but if you're going to be teaching these new concepts to your coworkers, just whoever you're talking to, any of your managers, stakeholders, if you're going to teach, make sure to give an, an example that makes sense and that they're able to easily digest and understand. And by example, I mean a business example. So how this will actually benefit the business. So if you showcase that and the benefits of that, then more likely than not, people will understand and will get what you're trying to say. So make sure to give an example if you are going to teach. Teaching isn't inherently a bad thing, but make it make sense. That's the goal. Keep it business focused. Back to the video. This kind of goes off the last point, but the next one is to be a great communicator. So someone who's able to communicate these data insights properly and effectively. TLDR, just make sure you know how to speak properly, say the right things, and it looks somewhat pretty. That's all it really takes. Speaking of, I have one dream skill set that I would love all data scientists to know and learn, and it's to have some sort of skill in the visual design aspect. I swear, if I get one more screen share of someone sharing their Jupyter notebook with me, and I have these ugly ass charts, I'm about to throw hands. Like, good lord, make it look pretty. Tell me I'm pretty! Tell me I'm pretty! 
So should you be a data scientist? As all things, it depends. This only makes sense if your brain easily understands just stats, numbers, models, things like that. If that was easy for you growing up, I would very much consider it because the coding is actually very minimal. It's just some basic functions and things like that, but it is like visualizing everything in your mind and picturing like these models. That's the hard part. Understanding these concepts is the hard part. So if you get that, yes, be a data scientist. Why not? If you find these things fascinating in any way too, like you're very interested in it. Sure, why not? And lastly, I'm actually gonna be sharing with you why I'm aiming towards being a data scientist soon. Well, one, it pays well. Two, the job market is definitely more, what's the word? Open to data scientists versus just an analyst or a BIE right now. All right, one last time. I'm also looking more towards business intelligence engineer roles. And most of the time or not, just like I mentioned before, these roles tend to lean more towards data science attributes. So what does that mean? Well, it means both needing a master's and needing to know Python and the stats background as well. Just diving deep into those data science -esque analysis, things that just basic SQL analytics and visualizations can't do, right? It's getting creative and understanding those parts of the role. So since I'm leaning more towards being a business intelligence engineer, having that data science background is a must. So that is something that I'm very much looking forward to and I'm super excited for. Last time, I promise. Back to the video. Two. I want to challenge myself more in this space. I want to learn and become more of a holistic data person. That's really my goal right now. As much as I love the SQL side and pulling data and data engineering side, I want to learn about the next steps and what's beyond just basic visualization and things like that. Like what's going to actually be crucial in this next age of data. At the same time, one of my future goals is to become a program manager in the data space or even a VP. And in my opinion, this is just how I think makes a great leader. I believe to lead, you have to first have experience in the space. And I want to have this experience just so I can better lead and guide and strategize and plan for my team or a future company, things like that. At the same time though, my brain is definitely just more analytical and logical. Definitely stats is a bit trickier for me. So that's something that's gonna have to be a hurdle for myself. I'm not best at that side, but I do think in just values, visuals, A-B testing, things like that. I'm just very logical. So it makes sense that I would want to become I'm a data scientist. But yes, with that being said, that's exactly what a data scientist actually does on the day to day. This is what the role encapsulates and pretty much everything you need to know to become one. If you have any more questions though, please leave them down below. I would love to answer them in a future video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This channel is going to pretty much be all about data and also just my life in my 20s as well. I'm excited to share more about what I'm going to be learning, my next steps, and where I'm headed personally. I've got some big big news coming up soon and i'm excited to share with you guys but yeah follow me on all the socials and i'll see you guys in the next video bye